hour in which we shall celebrate the launch of Lawrence O'Donnell's new show, which is tonight, right after this hour. We shall also celebrate the arrival of our new desk which inexplicably had something to do with the start of Lawrence's new show, but I'm not sure what, but I'm very excited about my new desk. Uh, we shall also celebrate this hour the return of Barack Hussein Obama. Hussein is back in mainstream Republican talking points, just in case any of Republicans' previous efforts to convince you that the president is secretly foreign did not work on you. They're going to give it one more shot. That's all to come over the course of the hour. But we begin tonight by putting a giant asterisk on the well-worn political truism that all politics is local. The big decision that Democrats had to make about this year's elections was whether or not they were going to try to run this year's elections as a national campaign, whether they were going to try to run as Democrats versus Republicans, or whether they were going to try to block out everything happening at the national level and instead hope that each individual congressional and Senate and governor's race would just be viewed as an individual candidate being judged on a local basis. Republicans, of course, had the same choice, but they made their decision very early on. Republicans decided as a party to run a national anti-Obama campaign for this year's elections. The elections for them are a referendum on President Obama. Every single Republican in the country is running a mini campaign for president with Barack Obama as his or her opponent. Democrats had the opportunity to counter that. They could have said, oh yeah, you want to run against President Obama? Great. Let's contrast him with you. Let's contrast him with what you're offering. Democrats could have approached the elections in a national way like that. But they've decided not to. They've decided on another strategy. Republicans are running national campaigns. Democrats are running local campaigns. Here's what that looks like on the ground. Up in Alaska, the surprise Republican nominee for the United States Senate is Tea Party favorite Joe Miller. If you go to Joe Miller's campaign website right now, here's what you'll find. Right at the top of the page, there is a big banner that reads, Alaskans endorse Joe Miller. Right next to Alaskans endorse Joe Miller, you will see images of decidedly non-Alaskans. <laughs> Non-Alaskan national conservatives, former presidential candidate Mike Huckabee, right-wing talk show hosts uh, Mark Levin, Laura Ingram, Lars Larson. If you click on the Alaskans endorse Joe Miller banner, you find all sorts of endorsements, again, from people who are not at all Alaskans. Uh, Non-Alaskan national conservatives. The first endorsement on the Alaskans endorse Joe Miller page is Minnesota Congresswoman uh, Michelle Bachman. Second endorsement is from the national conservative group Freedom Works. The next one is an actual Alaskan, hooray, uh, but most of the rest of the page is full of national conservative groups like the Club for Growth or conservative commentators like Martha Zoller or Eric Erickson. In Alaska, Joe Miller is running a decidedly national campaign. He is touting all of these endorsements he's gotten from national conservative figures. He just puts them all under a banner that calls them Alaskans. Who cares? The Democrat in that race, on the other hand, Scott McAdams, he just released his first campaign ad. See if you can notice the difference in strategy. This is a long way from D.C. I'm Scott McAdams, and I'm not your usual Senate candidate. I grew up in Petersburg, was a deckhand in the Bering Sea, went to college in Sitka, and married up. I've been a teacher, a mayor, and a dad. Here's the difference between me, Joe, and Lisa. They think this campaign is all about them. I think it's about Alaska and getting our fair share. I approve this message because after you've been cursed at in Norwegian, you can take on anyone. Did you catch the tagline sort of there? It's about Alaska. That's essentially his slogan. It's about Alaska. Local, local, local. That's how the Democrat Scott McAdams is running in Alaska. Now, on the front page of Republican Joe Miller's website, the campaign is touting a recent national media interview that he did with uh, Neil Cavuto, who was a host on Fox News. Scott McAdams, on the other hand, is touting this video on his website, and it's just about as local as you can get. Now, 
This may reflect the resources available to and the personalities and political preferences of these two candidates. But this is also evidence of the way that Democrats on the national level have decided to run this year. It, it, it is true across wildly different campaigns. For example, in that Alaska race, Scott McAdams is a huge underdog against uh, Republican Joe Miller and probably even against the potential write-in candidacy of Lisa Murkowski. But over in Delaware, Democrat Chris Coons is expected to beat Republican Christine O'Donnell. It is a totally different race with totally different expectations, but the campaigns look pretty much exactly the same. Here's what it looks like on the Republican side in Delaware. You have Republican candidate Christine O'Donnell, just like Joe Miller, touting the endorsements of, again, all sorts of national conservatives. People like South Carolina Senator Jim DeMitt, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin, the conservative organization, the Family Research Council, which is based, I think, in Michigan and in Washington, D.C. Also, there's conservative commentator Eric Erickson again, who, as best as I can tell, lives on CNN. During the Republican primary... Here is, look at this. This is the breakdown of where Christine O'Donnell got her money from. 85% roughly of her itemized campaign contributions came from not Delaware. Only about 15% of her campaign cash came from people who might even consider being able to legally vote for her someday because they live in Delaware. As, we, as we've reported on our website at Mattoblog, if you go to TeamChristine2010.com, which appears to at least be loosely affiliated with the official Christine O'Donnell campaign, you will see that Team Christine has begun forming affinity groups. Affinity groups by state and by foreign country. Texas for Christine, Colorado for Christine, New Jersey for Christine, Kansas for Christine. There's even an Italy for Christine, where people can be for Christine and give her money, but they can't legally vote for her no matter how much they might want to. Christine O'Donnell is not running a Delaware campaign. She is running a national, even international, help Christine O'Donnell get elected campaign. The Democrat, Chris Coons, on the other hand, is running this type of campaign. Six years ago, Newcastle County government was a mess of corruption and out of control spending. Then Chris Coons took over. Today, Newcastle County has a triple A bond rating. Now Chris Coons is running for Senate because we need new responsible leadership in Washington. Chris Coons. Hyper local. Hyperlocal, but Delaware is a very tiny state. It only has three counties. Newcastle County is by far the biggest one, but still, Local, right? Local. Definitely not a national ad. Midterm elections are not defined by one big race, by definition, right? It's district by district, state by state, candidate by candidate. But each political party has made a decision here. Republicans are running nationally. Democrats are running locally, which is why even if you have never heard of Scott McAdams, you sure as heck have heard of Joe Miller. It is quite possible you have never heard of Chris Coons, but you have definitely heard of Christine O'Donnell, even if you only get your news from Saturday Night Live. I, I do not raise this issue in order to quibble with the whole all politics is local truism. But that quote was supposedly coined by former Democratic House Speaker Tip O'Neill in the 1930s. And while I do not want to guess at anyone's exact ages, I am thinking that that's a time that reasonably predates, say, Bill O'Reilly. Earlier this month, the Democratic Governors Association filed an elections com complaint against Fox News after Mr. O'Reilly directed his viewers to the fundraising campaign website of Republican gubernatorial candidate John Kasich, while Kasich made his pitch to Fox viewers. What conservative candidates can do with the national fundraising platform that is Fox News right now qualitatively changes the game about whether candidates can compete by running purely local races. The National Conservative Fundraising and Softball Publicity Forum that did not exist before changes the rational calculus of how to campaign and how to win. For conservative candidates, it ends up being politically rational to run away from their own local media and only cultivate what they can get at the more than friendly national level. And when I, when, when I say run away from their local media, I mean literally run away from local media. Sharon, will you answer some questions really quickly? Yes, I'm going. I'm sorry. So you don't have anything to say about Dean Heller's comments from last night? No answer from Angle. Sharon, you don't have any... I'm running behind. I'm sorry. Republican Senate candidate Sharon Engel running away from Karen Griffin, a local reporter for the TV station KRNV in Reno, Nevada. 
Same thing, of course, happened in Delaware. Christine O'Donnell's campaign turns away local reporters for Delaware's News Journal uh, at a recent event, but let national reporters from the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times in. The strategy here is clear. Democrats may have felt like they had the luxury of choosing whether or not to run local campaigns or national campaigns for this year's elections. But top-tier Republicans are not bothering to compete on the local level anymore. They don't have to. Miss O'Donnell could be on here tonight, could be presenting herself in front of the nation. Her people mm -hmm. don't want her to be. She's going to have to dismiss that, go with her gut, get out there, speak to the American people, speak through Fox News. I'm going on Cheryl Riley, the 16th. Yes, the audience is friendly. Yes. If I could get an opportunity to say that at least once on this show, when I said it on Sean Hannity's television show, oh, we made $40,000 before we even got out of the studio in New York. We made forty grand before we even got out of the studio in New York during Mr. Hannity's show. Republican candidates should speak through Fox News. That is the advice they are giving each other because they have seen its, its effect firsthand. Republicans should be raising money through Fox News. That's what they're telling each other when it happens to them. Democrats and Republicans are operating in a media landscape that we have never had before in this country. We have never before had a television network designed to raise money for the candidates of one party. And because of that, all politics are not local anymore. Democrats are still trying to play that old game. Republicans are not. And here is what the impact of that looks like. Here's Christine O'Donnell's campaign website right now. After raising a huge chunk of her primary money from out of state, after Team Christine has managed to mobilize all these out of state, even out of country supporters, after her Fox News only media strategy, look at her fundraising goal right now. $2.5 million. As you can see, she has already surpassed that. She's already brought in $2.6 million. Now let's look at her opponent's website, Democrat Chris, Chris Coons. Democrat Chris Coons, the candidate who's running in Delaware, trying to appeal to people who will actually be able to vote for him because they live in Delaware. Look at his fundraising goal, $250,000. One-tenth. One-tenth of what Christine O'Donnell's raising. His goal is to raise one-tenth as much as she is raising. Used to be it made sense to pick a local strategy for a candidate with strong local credentials. Now, if that candidate is a Democrat, swamped. Swamped by national conservative money. If Democrats are not messaging and trying to compete at a national level simply in order to raise money, it does not matter how good their messaging is locally. They will get buried in conservative money. Buried in national conservative money that they raise nationally and have no shame about. All politics used to be local. Democrats want it to still be local. Those times have passed. This year, Democrats compete nationally or they do not compete at all.